Oftentimes in my videos on this channel, I brought up the concept of using prefabs in Unity ECS, but I've realized that I haven't made a dedicated video on them. And that's because they are pretty straightforward, especially if you are familiar with using them in regular Unity programming. However, I did just wanna to make today's video to make a dedicated video on using prefabs in Unity ECS to go over you know, basically how to use them as well as some very important considerations that you need to make to avoid some issues when working with prefabs in Unity ECS. So in today's video, I'll be giving you an introduction into using the prefab workflow in Unity's entity component system and then using this demo project that you see playing behind me, I'm gonna demonstrate how we can actually use these prefabs and instantiate them into our world using an entity manager. Now I should point out that we can also instantiate prefabs with an entity command buffer. However, there are some extra things that we need to consider for certain situations. So I'm actually going to be doing a separate video where I show you how to do that. That should be coming out a week after this video goes live. And as per usual, all the project files and code associated with today's video will be available using the links in the description below. So for starters, why would you want to use a prefab in Unity ECS? Well, for one, working with prefabs is familiar to most Unity developers. So most people who are using Unity ECS are going to be very experienced with the Unity platform. So they already know the ins and outs of how to deal with prefabs. And if you've been working with Unity, you know that modifying and instantiating prefabs is like second nature to you. So, you know, just being able to take advantage of that existing infrastructure that is already built into the Unity game engine and use this over on the ECS side is very much preferred. Also, the alternative to this is to basically create your own entities from scratch, where you basically just, you know, start with an empty entities, say what components you want on them and configure all the components. And that can get pretty tedious, especially if you're doing, you know, a lot of these. Um, and, you know, it gets a little bit difficult when it comes to adding renders and things like that. There are th some things built in that help you do that a little bit more easier, but it is just a little bit tedious. And especially if you need to go and like make any modifications to the archetype that you want to spawn, you know, you have to go into the code and find that location and, you know, make some configurations on there. It's definitely much easier to use the built-in methods of modifying your prefabs. And so for those reasons, that's why the, the prefab work flow is the recommended way to create and spawn entities in ECS. However, there are some reasons why you would not want to use the prefab workflow. And this mostly comes to when you have purely data only entities, when you just have, you know, entities that are holding some data on them, but they don't necessarily need to live anywhere in the world. They don't need to, you know, render or have a translation component or anything along those lines. If they're just holding bits of data, you know, it's much easier actually to, you know, spawn those through code and configure your data as needed. One of the main reasons for this is because of course in the Unity game engine, every single game object has a transform component. Now when we convert a game object over to an entity, that transform component is gonna be converted into a local to world component, a translation component, and a rotation component. If there's a scale set, there will also be another um, additional scale components as well. So if we're doing some purely data only entities, then we don't need all that extra transform stuff. It's much preferred in that case to create your entities through code. Once again, to demonstrate how to use prefabs in Unity's entity component system, I've created this demo scene where we're going to be spawning prefabs using an entity Entity manager. Once again, in a separate video, I'm going to be going over how to do this in an entity command buffer because there are some extra considerations that will need to be made. But it's basically just a pretty simple demo where we're going to be spawning capsules randomly throughout our world. You'll also notice that there is a red laser that's going to be pointing to the last capsule that we spawned. And the purpose of this laser is to demonstrate a couple of the quirks and things you need to watch out for when instantiating prefabs in Unity ECS. And once again, all the code and project files featured in today's video are available in the links in the description below. Okay, so here we are over in Unity in this demo scene that I've created. Uh, you see that I basically just have this green little capsule here, and then we can just call this whatever we want. In this case, I've just named it the Turbo Prefab. And you'll see over in the inspector, it's a pretty basic capsule. It just has a convert to entity script on it, and you know, just some pretty basic things that any standard capsule game object would have. Now, to make this a prefab, it's, it's super easy. You know, same as creating a prefab in regular Unity. You can of course just drag this into any folder over in your project hierarchy here. I've just named this folder prefabs for nice organization. Now, once we have that in our prefabs folder, you'll see that the uh, game object is now blue. That means that it is actually a prefab, but we can just go ahead and delete this instance out of the scene because we no longer need that uh, original instance. So you'll see there is no longer any capsule in here. And of course, in the hierarchy, there's nothing listed. 
So let's go ahead and enter play mode and see if anything happens here. Well, of course, you wouldn't expect anything to happen because we haven't really done anything. Um, so anyways, we just still kind of have this blank play field here. And same thing if we go over to our dots hierarchy, we don't have anything crazy. I only have this capsule spawner entity, which is just something that we'll be getting to in a moment. All right, so now we'll just go ahead and open up our code editor of choice. This time I'm using Rider, and we're just gonna go ahead and create a basic I component data. You'll see that I've named it capsule prefab. It just has one field, which is a public entity, which of course I've named value. So this is just a pretty standard component data uh, because I do have the generate authoring component. We can now come over to Unity and just go ahead and add the capsule prefab onto our capsule spawner. You see that now it's asking us for a value and you'll notice that the value field is actually asking for a game object, even though um, this field is a, an entity. However, because we're using the authoring and conversion workflows, it's gonna be asking for a game object prefab. And then at runtime, it's actually going to convert that over to an ECS prefab, which we'll be able to spawn using this component here. So let's just go ahead and drag in that turbo prefab that we added to our prefabs folder. Now again, you'll see that when I enter play mode, nothing happens. However, there is one thing different over in the dots hierarchy. You'll see that we now have this turbo prefab. And you'll see that it is listed in blue and also this little hexagon is now filled in. So if actually if we click on this, we can go over in the inspector and we can see you know, what is going on here. You see that it looks like you know pretty much again a standard entity that has you know some uh, you know mesh and translation associated with it. You know basically what we would expect from a capsule just being converted into an entity. However, there is one thing to point out. You see up in the tags area right here, there is this special prefab tag, and the special prefab tag uh, basically means that this entity doesn't exist anywhere in our world. You know you can search for it inside the scene view for as long as you want, but I promise you're not going to find it. Basically means that this is. A a prefab entity that is referenced by another entity here. So basically when we put this prefab on the authoring component, it actually goes through a little bit of a registration process essentially to basically register this as a prefab. And that's where it adds, you know, the prefab tag and all that. There is a way that you can manually register these prefabs, but I'm not gonna be covering that in today's video. All right, so we have our prefab. Now let's actually go ahead and spawn it. So you see that I've created this spawn capsule system up here, and then we do have this private entity for the capsule prefab. Now the capsule prefab, I'm just gonna be storing this on the system and just get a reference to it at the beginning of the system. And then we're just gonna be instantiating that whenever we press a certain key on the keyboard. Now, if there's any reason why this entity value and this, and this prefab may change over time, then it might be wise for you to just get a new fresh reference to that prefab every time you instantiate it. But again, it's kind of up to you depending on the needs of your project. So you'll see that down in the on start running, this is where we actually get the prefab. Um, I'm setting the target frame rate to 30 frames per second, um, just to kind of make something a little bit more obvious when we go to actually spawn these prefabs. Anyways, we'll just go ahead and set the capsule prefab just by getting the singleton of the capsule prefab data type that we've created. And then of course doing the dot value on that. Okay. So so now down in the on update function, let's go ahead and spawn this. So again, we can use the entity manager. So we can do an entity manager dot instantiate, and then we can go ahead and pass in our capsule prefab. So now when we enter play mode and press the A key, you'll see that the capsule prefab spawns in the world right in its initial basically prefab location. If you'll remember from earlier, when we created this prefab, it was kind of floating above. Um, now, again, if we continue to press the A key, you see over in the dots hierarchy, we're creating a bunch of more of these prefabs. However, they're all just being spawned at the same exact position. Okay, great. So now we have our capsule spawning into the world. Now let's go ahead and point this laser at it. So in order to do that, we're going to need to get a reference to this particular entity that we just spawned. Luckily, this entity manager.instantiate passes back a reference to that particular entity. So if we just do a var new capsule equals to this entity manager.instantiate, we'll now get a reference to that newly spawned entity. After that, it's just simple as setting the singleton value on the last spawned capsule equal to that new capsule. And you'll see that down here, I've just created this you know, simple little function where we uh, go ahead and get the translation of the last spawned entity. And we're just gonna draw a line right to it. So you see, I'll enter play mode and I'll press the A key. And now we have our capsule spawning with this laser 
pointing right to it. So now let's do something a little bit more interesting and actually have these prefabs spawn all over the world here. And again, that's basically just going to be as easy as getting a new random position, going ahead and assigning that to a new translation component and then just doing an entity manager set component data, passing in our new capsule with that new translation component. Okay, so we'll go ahead and enter play mode and I'll press the A key. Now watch very carefully which what happens here. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and continue spawning these and you can kind of see what's going on. You'll see that the capsule kind of flashes real quickly in that initial position and it goes to whichever random position we've now assigned it. And in fact, to make this even more obvious, I'm gonna go ahead and add in a debug.break here, which is going to pause the Unity editor when we actually spawn this capsule. So go ahead and enter play mode and I'll press the A key. Now, this is kind of interesting. You'll see what's happening here you'll see that the capsule is kind of spawned in that initial position on the world on this first frame. However, the laser is pointing to a completely different location. The laser is pointing over here. Now let's go ahead and step over one frame. You'll see that now the capsule snaps into that position right where the laser is pointing. Again, we can just go ahead and spawn another of these capsules and you know we get a very similar result where the capsule is here, um, but the laser is pointing way over there. Let's go ahead and move over one frame and then now the capsule snaps to that position. So what exactly is going on here? Well, if we take a look over at the systems window, you'll see that we have our spawn capsule system and the spawn capsule system is being ran after the transform system group. Now the transform system group, if we open this up and see kind of what's in here, one that we need to watch out for is this TRS to local to world system. Now, I would recommend that you go check out the video that I did on using transforms in Unity's entity component system if you want a little bit more information on this. But basically, TRS, that's transform, rotation, and scale to local to world. That basically takes the values on the translation, rotation, and scale components and then uses those to calculate a local to world matrix. Now, the local to world matrix basically tells Unity where in the particular world to render that entity and what orientation it needs to be in. So so it's very important that the local to world is correct. Now, if you can kind of think about what's happening, we're actually setting the translation components after that TRS to local to world system has already ran. So basically what that means is, you know, even though the translation component is set where we want it to, the local to world component has not been updated with the exact transform values that we need it to have. So that's why the laser is pointing to the correct location because the laser is looking where that transform component is pointing to, but the local to world component is still set to the initial position that we're spawning the capsule and has not been updated yet. Next frame comes around and then that local to world component gets updated and then now it's going to be appearing in the correct spot in the world. Now there are a couple ways that we can resolve this. One way that I would not recommend actually doing is just setting the local to world component to that same random position here. So basically what this means is that we're spawning the capsule in the world with the correct translation and local to world values. I wouldn't recommend doing this because it's you know just another thing that you kind of need to keep track of. Also, it's not really recommended to be messing around with the local to world component unless you absolutely need to. And it does get kind of a little bit weird because you know you may be thinking you know oh if we only need the local to world component to be correct, you know maybe we can just set this and we can get away with not setting the translation. Well, in that case, actually what's gonna happen is something kind of interesting where it's actually going to basically spawn that capsule to the random position on the first frame. And if we go over to the second frame, well, it's going to update the local to world component to what the translation component is. Again, the translation still has the default values of that prefab. So it's actually going to spawn to that random location first. And then on the second frame after it's been spawned, it's actually gonna go ahead and snap back to the original location of that prefab. Again, yeah, this is not recommended. So we're not actually gonna do that here. We're gonna do something much easier where we're just gonna go ahead and make this system run before the transform system group. So basically, you know, we're gonna set the transform and then the transform system group is going to run and that's going to update the local to world to the correct position. So now now, if we enter play mode, let's go ahead and spawn one of these guys.
guys, you'll see that on the first frame that it spawned, you know, the game's paused right now. The laser is pointing directly at the entity and the entity is right where it needs to be. If we continue executing again, same thing is gonna happen on the next capsule that we spawn and the next one and so on. So anyways, that is an introduction to using prefabs in Unity's entity component system. As you can see, they're quite similar to working with prefabs in regular Unity. However, there are some special considerations that we do need to make for the ECS things just to make sure that everything um, displays, displays properly in our game. Once again, I will have a video coming out one week after this video goes live where I'm going to be demonstrating how to use these entity prefabs using an entity command buffer and some of the extra considerations that we need to make especially if we want to reference an entity that we just instantiated with this command buffer. So anyways, be sure to stay tuned for that. But anyways, if you did enjoy today's video, I'd really appreciate it if you hit that like button. Also, feel free to subscribe to the channel for lots more videos about Unity's entity component system and their data-oriented technology stack. As always, if you do have any questions for me or suggestions for future videos, you can always leave those down in the comment section below or join us over on Discord over at tmg.dev discord. I hope you all have a fantastic rest of your day and I'll see you in the next one. Thank you.